first I gotta show you something. Whenever I sculpt birds, I love to do them in pairs. So like on this sculpture right here of Maya and Jade, one cat's all bird, two cat's all birds. So often birds love to be in pairs. We have zillions of dove and gambles quail down here and hummingbirds and usually every time we see them, they're together. Pretty cool. Come on in. Creativity. Remember the Einstein quote yesterday? What did that say? Uh, creativity is intelligence having fun, right? So let's get on some comfy shoes today. And I have something first I want to share with you. It's this right here. Check this out. This is a brand new bell bicycle helmet not just your ordinary bicycle helmet this is a good one I put about 10 to 20 miles on my bicycle every day and so I wanted something really really uh, quality thank you Leslie Lundgren for reminding me how important helmets are for those of you Leslie is doing fantastic she had a doctor's appointment up in Utah yesterday and Leslie we're so glad you're okay and doing all right Accidents can happen anywhere, and if we can be safe and protected, all the better, right? So, anyway, just got this uh, yesterday and really excited about it. Fits perfect. Lisa ordered it on Amazon, and I have a little pesky bug that's still trying to find me. So, yeah, <laughs> there we go. So, what might your favorite color be, Gary? Oh, yeah, I wonder what that <laughs> might be. Gosh. I'm just noticing this, every single thing. If this could have been lime green, we would have ordered it in lime <laughs> green. Um, I actually have a can of lime green spray paint over there that I painted my glasses, so I may have to do that with this. <laughs> Why not, right? <laughs> okay. Another thing I was thinking about. What are we going to sculpt next week? Hmm. Mm. I was thinking, first of all, to tell you that next week we'll be, we will be starting with Monday, then you get to do what you want, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday we will sculpt again, and then you have all weekend to do whatever you want. So Monday and Friday next week, same time. I thought the first one that we would do Monday may be Delbert the Dragon. Would you all like to sculpt a dragon? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be fun? Dragons are so neat. And for those of you that live up in Springville, Utah, this sculpture right here, Delbert the Dragon, should be very soon placed next to La Casita Restaurant. Let me give a shout out to La Casita Restaurant. They still do uh, pickup. Uh, take out. Take out. So you can still get lots of uh, their incredible, yummy seafood enchiladas and everything else that they have up there. And Delbert the Dragon should be uh, there really soon to wave at you. Maybe today, maybe during the weekend, maybe next week when we start. But we'll see. He'll, he'll be excited to see you there. So we'll do that next week. And uh, more just a little bit about birds today. As I mentioned, I love sculpting birds. Love, love, love. The human figure is the most beautiful, awesome thing in the world there is to create as a sculptor because it's so complex and it moves in such beautiful ways and 
dancers and just the figure itself is just absolutely incredible. My next favorite thing to sculpt is birds. And I think it has to do a lot because of their wings. Their wings are so beautiful. Let's see, where's, oh yeah. This is, uh, this is the one that we were looking at the other day to sculpt our wings on. Remember that incredible word? Oh my gosh, I think this is one of the funnest sculptures that we did thus far, that we've sculpted thus far, and that was the words, uh, those were the words F-L-Y, first love yourself, right? And then we put wings on it, that's just so important. And it was perfect that we put the wings on because when we do take care of ourself and our own needs, then and only then can we reach out to others and take care of them. If we're empty, we don't, we're not filled up, how can we fill other people up, right? Now there's also the inverse of that, and that is when we do fill other people up, that helps fill ourselves up. So it's a beautiful combo meal, I call it, a yin and a yang. It's really cool the way that works out. But anyway, speaking of birds, another pair. This is a piece I did a while back. Uh, they were, uh, let's see, sulfur crested cockatoos or Moluccan cockatoos, I can't remember. But it was, uh, we used to have a, a big cockatoo and it was so fun to sculpt these. Of course, a male and a female in there together there. That's down here, uh, part of our uh, personal collection. And then also I wanted to show you, so we're gonna be sculpting Gamble's quail. Are you ready for this? Watch this cool video I found on quail. And we have hundreds of quail in our yard. Turn it right there to get the glare off. Right there. Okay, let's see here. Let's get this thing going. There we go. Can you see it pretty good? Mm -hmm. That's what our yard looks like. Look at those little guys. Aren't they beautiful? Those are Gamble's quail. Oh, now the farm. birds, yeah, the birds that you hear are the, just the sparrows in the foreground. The quail sound more like, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. but aren't they beautiful? Of course, the females, and there's the male. <laughs> there you go. Um, let's see here. Oh, here's some little quail chicks. Let's see if it shows that. Okay, let's, uh, oh, look. There she comes. Oh, look at that. Oh, look, how cute is that? Okay, this whole session was worth watching just to see that, right? <laughs> little baby quail look Cute. at that oh, <laughs> oh my gosh okay so there we go lots of cool things with quail are you ready to sculpt them let's do this this is going to be so fun so a while back I did the uh, the sculpture of the quail and I did them separate right I wanted the the, uh, I decided to sculpt a mom and a dad quail, and I wanted them so that people could place them any way they wanted. You know, maybe they could be like that or whatever. And then I also wanted them to be able to be close, like that. And then, just like you saw there, all those little babies, so I went and sculpted a whole bunch of little, little baby quail. And they were really fun. But look at what a simple, basic shape they are. And that's why I thought it would be so fun today because these are going to be really easy to sculpt. You saw what they look like real, but as artists that you and I are, and we're all born artists, remember the famous quote, you're probably so tired of it, every child is born an artist, said Pablo Picasso, the challenge is how to remain an artist once we grow up. And, uh, and so being an artist, we can do whatever we want. We could sculpt them super realistic like that and put the feet and everything if we wanted or we can sculpt them and make them very simple. So you don't even see the feet on these guys. You see them, their little tail there, 
but basically it's just the basic shape, right? And I did think it was really cool with the quail that that little thing sticking out there. So that's why I was talking to my little grandson Cooper today and uh, I was telling Cooper, I said, so get your clay and get a toothpick because a toothpick works perfect to stick in there and then we'll add some clay to it. So for you at home, once again, you can sculpt them any color you want. See, they weren't actually green in there, were they? But I decided to put a green finish on my quail, that patina. And those are bronze, right, Gary? And these are cast in bronze, yes. And so what we're going to do, remember yesterday in sculpting the Statue of Liberty, let's see, where did she go? Right back we there. A, basically, we uh, kind of did a kind of a pear, right? Kind of a pear shape, kind of like this. In fact, I would say that is what we're starting out with today is a pear. So let's just go ahead and sculpt a pear with a flat bottom. Okay, is that shape kind of looking like this, uh, this guy right here? Okay, so there, there that is. We can just squeeze our clay right there, bring it up for the neck, make a little twist in it there. Maybe a little bit more like that. Grab a little bit more clay and let's maybe add this out here. Look how easy this is, my gosh. This is probably the easiest sculpture that we've done and probably one of the funnest because when you're done with it, it is going to look like a quail, and the reason everybody will know it's a quail is because of the little feather coming out of the top of the head there. Now, I think I told you the other day that we had our, uh, we had a little tent set up in our backyard, and uh, some quail got inside the tent. We left the door open and I walked by and I heard them all scurrying around and trying to fly out of there. And one of them was caught in there and so I had to catch him. And I have a video uh, of, of holding that quail. It's on the uh, video announcing what we were going to sculpt today. So if you wanna scroll down, you can watch that video. And then also the video that we just watched of the quail walking around there. I just shared that on my Facebook post, and so you can take a look at that too. So, okay, there's our tail. Coming out there like that. They have just a little tail, right? The Ketz all birds that we looked at when I was coming in. Of course, they have the great big, huge, long, long green tail, and that's what the Mayan uh, Moctezuma's uh, headdress was made out of, was Ketz all bird. Uh, tail feathers okay so there's that we just squeeze this up a little bit more and that's basically that shape isn't it let's kind of squish it on the bottom you at home can just kind of push it down like that and then it's real easy to stand up there right how's that okay now let's grab a little bit more clay now, what kind of clay at home are you finding as the best for you? A lot of people I know have uh, used Lisa's recipe and made the, the homemade clay out of the uh, flour and salt and stuff. And it's really, really, really easy to work. And it's kind of cool because then it gets harder later when you have a hard copy. Now, this would be a wonderful piece to sculpt. Um, using this type of homemade clay. Here's a batch of green clay that she made. Wow, what a nice color. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's great clay, and especially for this project, because you just have one big solid shape, 
and, uh, and then we have the thing sticking out the top that you can stick a toothpick in. So let's go ahead now, and we'll add a little bit of clay here for the head. Now one thing I have noticed is that birds have really, really cute cheeks. Right there, Almost look at jowls, that. Huh? Yeah, kind of like, you know, just <laughs> sticking out there. Maybe that's so that they can, uh, uh, maybe they need strong jaw muscles to chomp on the seeds or something, I don't know. Or but, put food in their mouth to bring to their babies in their nest. Oh, that's right, yes. Yeah. So we will put some bigger jowls on our quail. Now I'm gonna tell you something really cool. When I was learning how to sculpt birds, there is an artist, her name is Sandy. And Sandy loves to sculpt birds. And I took a class with Sandy at the Scottsdale Artist School once. Uh, and she taught me how to sculpt birds. And I noticed that uh, she always put these nice cheeks on her bird birds. So there we go. It kind of put a little bit of pointedness out there for the for the bill, isn't that easy? And then you can just kind of smooth it out. See how it's kind of rough over here? Go ahead and add a little bit of clay there. Smooth it. And that's all this is, is just a whole bunch of smoothing with this basic shape to get it to look like that. Okay, now we'll grab one of our toothpicks and we'll, uh, we'll use one of them to chomp on. <laughs> and then we'll use another one and for this size of a little guy, I think I might uh, break the toothpick in half. And let's see, we'll match it up to this one. So it's probably right about there and see how it leans a little bit forward. So we'll go ahead and stick it in about like there. And then we'll grab a little wad of clay like that, make a little little snake kind of thing, and we'll just wrap it around our toothpick. See how easy that is, and then we'll just make it go a little forward, add a little bit more clay there. And there we go. How easy was that? You made it look pretty easy. Boy, I can't wait to see what some of you have sculpted. I can't wait to see what some of the colors are that you've uh, sculpted them out of. I can't wait to see if you've done some of the different shapes. So see, all of these Love little the guys gestures. here, all of these little quail, you could do any one of these shapes for one of the little babies. See how his head is turned back like that. That would be a fun one to sculpt. Uh, here's one where it's kind of looking like dad here. Okay. Here's one that's kind of looking like mom. There. Now see the little babies, until they're a little older, they don't have that little crest. 
sticking out of their little head there. And I've tried to figure out why do they have that little thing there. I don't know. I think it's just purely decoration. Lisa, you like fun, cool hair. Mm -hmm. Why do you think they have that cool thing? They won the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> they won the lottery. Yeah, it's pretty got, cool. Mm -hmm. Unique. <laughs> That's fantastic. I love that. So tell everybody why you have 15 little babies in our set. Oh, yeah. I should turn the camera No, you do you it. No, us. I'm your camera girl, and I'm having a hard time with this little thing today, so you better not mess with it. Okay. <laughs> so we decided, um, Lisa said, because uh, we have the quail down at the gallery in Tubac, Arizona. Um, <clears throat> Karen Newbie Gallery, they call it Newbie Gallery, and our beautiful friend Kim Roseman down there, she sells a lot of these quail at the gallery. And so Lisa and I were down there at their last show, and Lisa said, wow, I would love to have that in our house and put it on the mantle. So we did, and she said, and could we get 15 of the little babies? Yay. And I said, of course, I can imagine why. That is because we have 15 little grandchildren. And so each one of these represents one of our grandkids. And the gestures on each one of them represent their little personalities. So That's right. we got a certain amount to kind of match who they are. Yep. And so uh, the picture that you saw this morning that we were going to uh, do quail, sculpt quail, that picture is the quail on our mantle there. So with all the little cute babies. So that was really, really fun to have something in the house that reminds us of our beautiful, awesome grandkids. Okay, so I'm just kind of making the shape of that one there. And it needs a little bit more clay back here. Put that out there like that. Squish that a little bit like that for the head. Bring it up there like that for the little, I guess we could call it a snout, but it's actually a bill, right? We'll make our little puffy cheek there, pull that up just a little bit. There we go. You know, we need to add a little bit of clay back here for our tail. So we'll do that. Now this principle that we are doing here of not making it exact, many of you may know and many of you perhaps don't know, it's called abstract sculpture. So in other words, Anything that you're looking at that perhaps has a lot of detail, let's see, let's pick, uh, let's maybe pick this eagle right here. If you look at that, you see all of the stuff going on, right? You see the open mouth, you see all the feathers, everything. But if you look at that eagle or anything else and you squint your eyes like this, you look at something and you really squint your eyes so you can just barely see the outline, then that is the abstract shape. So if you squinted your eyes at this, you'd basically see a V, right? And you'd see something tall holding up the V. And so that's just called abstract. A lot of people um, have made some wonderful sculptures called abstract sculpture just by sculpting the basic shape of something. And that's really fun to do because, as we talked about before, sometimes we get um, obsessed with putting in all the detail, right? And detail's fun. It's really a lot of fun. But if you don't get the basic shape of something, all the detail in the world um, doesn't make it perhaps a, more of an interesting sculpture. So that's kind of the basic shape there of 
that one. Maybe make the bill a little smaller there. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. And maybe we'll go ahead and take our toothpick. Get a little stick there. Poke in that. Get a little piece of clay there. Wrap it around it. Make that fun little shape there. And boom. There we go. Okay, so we can have her. We could have her with her head up like that if we wanted to. Or we could have it like that. Like they're nesting. Yeah. Like they're snuggling. And there they're kind of snuggling up together. Like it. Yeah. There we go. They're talking. They're talking about all of these kids <laughs> and what in the heck they're going to do to raise them. Right? Just like these guys right here. Pretty lucky they come hardwired to all travel together, right? That's right. <laughs> Be hard to keep track of them. Yep, it sure would. So I hope you all have uh, lots of fun. There's a whole bunch of different shapes that you can make with your quail. You could, uh, you know, have, I don't know, you could put them together in different ways. You know, there's just just unlimited what we can do with our imagination and our creativity. So I wish you all an incredible, awesome, fun weekend. Um, hope you're able to visit either personally or on the Facebook Live or um, just through uh, Zoom or Zoom or anything with your family, your friends, your relatives, and get to chat with them and say hi to them and stuff and stay in touch. Even though we're apart, we still get to be together spiritually and mentally, right? And have a good time. So have an incredible weekend. Stay creative. Enjoy. Take care. Love and appreciate you. Thanks for letting me come into your home. It's been really, really fun. We're going to continue to try to put these on YouTube and having some challenges, but we're going to get them on there more and more. So take care.